Dude, I, you made me think of something because uh, I checked out your Instagram account. Because one of the things that I'm thinking, you know, when it comes to success in comedy is that just being a good stand-up comedian isn't really enough. You know what I mean? You've got a lot of other good stand-up comedians. And I, I looked at your Instagram account and you said, I think it says new video every week. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this guy's really good at posting videos. How, how much of uh, like social media and posting things like that do you think contributes towards being a successful comedian? I think now it's just changed everything. Mm. Like, I just think like within the last two years, everything's changed from like, you want to be on TV to you want to have loads of followers. Mm. Because, like, loads of followers can can sell out shows. You can go on tour. Like, even in Norway, like, if people in, like, Orleson or, like, Trondheim are watching your videos and you go there, they will come and see your show. Like, at least they could do it. They know who you are. Um, yeah, I think it's, like, changed everything. And also, you know what I was saying about, like, I'm seeing earlier. It's changed my perspective on that. Because when you MC, when you compare... Like now, you can, it's like an opportunity to get a new clip. So every time I MC, I film it every single time mm. because something might happen, something funny might happen, and you could post it, etc. And I also do think it's like I say at the end of every set in, in the UK, I plug my Instagram. And if I headline, and if I can, it doesn't, to be fair, I don't even have to headline. If I, if there's a chance for it, I have like a QR code. So I will go, hey guys. I'm doing a longer show in London soon. I've got, um, I also post clips every single week uh, on my Instagram. If you guys want to follow, I'll be standing outside. I've got a QR code. You can come and scan it. And then people go and scan it. That's so clever. That's so clever. So you stand outside of the club or like other, at the, uh, outside exit, of the room, outside yeah. of the room with a QR code, like on a laminated piece of paper. Or yeah, it's not laminated, but yeah, but basically, yeah. <laughs> I gave yeah. you the lamination. Yeah. Cred. <laughs> <laughs> but like, the so problem with laminated is that you don't want the um, you don't want the light to. Uh, do you know what I mean? I, yeah, I know what you mean. The yeah. reflection might reflection. get in the way of the QR reading. Yeah, but um, mm, I like that you thought about that. I mean, it's just like I don't think I invented it, but I, I do do it. <laughs> not that many people do do that, and it is a bit like it does really work. It works so much better than just plugging it. Yeah, and. But I mean, you are, I mean, first of all, I wouldn't do it if it didn't go well. Like if I had a terrible <laughs> gig, I'm not going to be there. Yeah. Guys, if you want to see more of this, if you want to see more of, <laughs> if you guys want to see more of silence, come on over to my Instagram, you know, yeah. but, um, but I, but I do do it. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it, if you think about it, it's a bit of like an awkward, vulnerable thing to be standing there just like being like, do you like me? But if you do well, people come over and they do scan it and also, those audiences are more valuable than um, just Instagram audiences because those audiences are people that will go to comedy gigs. They're already there. They've gone to comedy gigs. Yes. Way more likely to go to another show that you do in the future. Yeah, that's really good insight because yeah. they're already comedy fans. Yeah. And now they just understand how to find you. Now they're a fan of you, basically. Yeah. So that is like, uh, um, yeah, that's a massive thing. And I do think... It has changed everything. So, but my point with this is that when I'm saying that, I also need to make sure that I'm giving them something for following me. So you can't just be like, do you want to follow me? And then I'm just showing them loads of pictures of like, here's my brother. Here's like, here's me watching TV. Like it has to be some sort of entertainment, you know? Like mm. no one's going to like, I know they're not paying for it, but no one's going to like subscribe to YouTube, YouTube channels if you don't like the content, if there's no content, you know? Yeah. So I think of it as a way to gaining followers, but I also think of it as a way of sort of entertaining the followers that I have. Mm. And crowd work is a good way to do that because if I just film all of my bits and post them, then I'm going to run out of bits. And also when they come and see my show, they're going to be like, oh yeah, I saw all of that on this Instagram. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true, man. I, I think that's really good insight because I, I do a lot of shows over here and I think like, there's five or six comedians in this lineup. If you're first or second, like nobody's going to remember your fucking name. No, and that, you, you might have crushed it. You might have killed it. But if they don't have a way to find you afterwards, like that's just a lost connection. But I do think that is true anywhere, to be fair. Like I do. That's why I mentioned the headline thing. If I'm closing a gig, it's so much easier to get loads of followers from yeah. that because they just remember you so well. They're like, oh, that's that guy from the end. He was so good or whatever, if it goes well. Um, but... um. Or if it's just before a break, it's very good. If you do open, 
it's going to be so much harder, let's be honest. Like, if you're opening, you're very often, like, taking a bullet for everyone else, if the audience are on warm. You are taking that bullet. And people don't know that. People that don't do stand-up comedy, they just think that first guy wasn't as good as the rest of them. Yeah. Which is the most annoying thing Espe- Especially because, like, whoever's organizing the night or the conf making the lineup is going to put somebody who's good opening so that they can get the show headed in the right direction yeah because the opening thing is where the audience goes oh this is what it's going to be like yeah okay so that they do know what they're doing especially if you're doing like i think it's different if you're doing like somewhere like lotted yeah or like like a big club whether it's in norway you know uh the uk or wherever if it's a big club they are more likely to trust the night because it's a big club. Yep. But if you're doing this like weird sort of like basement or above a pub, and even though they're gray light, li- it's a gray lineup on, unless the the first comedian sort of sets the tone, what this is going to be like, and the MC as well, mm. I would say, do set the tone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. It, yeah, but she, I think it was really like it's really good talking about like the social media game because I feel like a lot of comedians in Norway, especially a lot of my colleagues, we're not really taking advantage of utilizing the social media platform for all that it's worth because it is, it is, I think, a really good way to just to connect with people that like you, with people that are fans. Mm. Uh, but do you just do one video a week? Or what's your like? Are you, and are you releasing like once a week on the same time for kind of consistency like that? Or yeah, that that's the aim. The aim is to release every Tuesday. Gotcha. Every Tuesday. Um, but now because I've been flying back and forth to Norway so much, I haven't been able to do it the last two weeks. Mm. But that is normally Tuesday, same time every week. Um, so yeah, that's what I try to do. I I understand what you mean. I think. I think there are like two different things. You can do the stand-up sets and the and bits and all of that. And also loads of comedians are doing sketches. That's yeah, a, that's a yeah, thing. Yeah. It's a lot of like, it depends. Like people have different styles. Some people have the more like mainstream style, which will be like, you know, like um, in the UK it will be like British people in the summer. And then like what British people do in the summer, like classic, like, oh, it's so warm and it's so warm. And like, just like mm-hmm. stuff like that. And then some people are more like niche, but you can be niche on social media because... You know, if you are a bit weird and alternative, there are, you know, social media is everybody. There are loads of people that are going to like that. Dude, I have a friend, a comedian friend in Iceland, and he just (laughs) does like dad jokes about Iceland. And he has so many followers. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. Like hundreds of thousands from people all around the world. But yeah, I could definitely, I, and and I completely get that because it's like, you, it's such a small niche. It's like his USP, like his unique selling point. But I definitely... Oh, I like how you abbreviated that. Yeah, I know, USP. I don't know if you guys have heard of something little called USP. Um, (laughs) Where did you hear that? No, it's just what they say. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did make it up. I did make it up. (laughs) (laughs) That would be, that would be, I'm, that would be so wanky. I'm not going to lie. That would be so wanky. Now, they do just call it USP. Do you know what the part part about that, though, is something I definitely do feel a bit of? Like, I don't, when I do stand up in, in Norway, I don't really like to talk too much about that I live in the UK. Like I, I wrote a new joke about it that I did yesterday, but but I don't really like to talk about it because if you live in England and you're Norwegian and when you're in Norway, like you will sometimes obviously use like in like this English word will come into a sentence or whatever. And people are just like, oh, someone's living in the UK. Someone's <laughs> living someone knows how to speak English. And it just gets like sometimes I'll say like I'll be like not juice, but you know, like something like bacon. They'd be like, bacon, ooh, ooh. And I'm like, you would say bacon as well. Like, what would you say? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Bacon is a bad example, but you know, like my brother says funny. Like he will use the word, my brother's 18. Mm. Like he will use the word funny instead of saying mushum. Yeah, okay. Because that's just what they do. Yeah, and he lives in Norway. He lives in Norway, yeah. Everybody lives in Norway. But if I did it, people would be like, all right, someone's in the UK. Yeah, yeah Mr. Fancy yeah. Pants. No, but US, USP is just like, it's just something that's thrown out a lot. Because obviously, on the English comedy scene, there's just so many people. So people are thinking a, l- a bit about the USP. Not everybody oh, is, but... Oh, I know what you mean. But it's a bit of like... It's a bit of like, I am I am that Norwegian guy yeah, or maybe I'm, that Thor guy. I'm that Australian guy. Yeah. you're. That's what I That's what I meant earlier. Yeah. But that's also what I was like interested about because I very much feel like one of the reasons why I was a bit nervous about doing comedy in Norway. And I mean, not even nervous, just like a challenge is that my identity in 
in England, just on stage, but also off stage, is that Norwegian guy. Mm. Thoughts from Norway. I get so many questions about Norway. Sometimes I feel like I'm not like the Im- Norwegian ambassador or whatever, you know. People be like, I'm going to Tromsø next week. I've never been to Tromsø. But yeah. still I'm there, like, I live up to it. I'm like, oh man, it's so nice, so nice in Tromsø. I've never been, I've no idea. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. That's, that's I have a very similar experience, man. Like a, the Australian guy. But I... Uh, I have a few friends as well that I feel like they kind of lean into that identity a little bit too much. You know what I mean? Like if they're the, you know, they're this guy. I'm like, okay, you're the that guy. But how long are you going to do the that guy jokes for? Yeah. And I feel like the same with me as well. It's like, I, especially I'm performing to a lot of new people that have never, ever, ever heard of me. And I got to do a little, little bit of introduction stuff. But how hard do I want to go with the I'm from Australia jokes? Yeah, because you just become like a bit of a stereotype, right? Yeah, right. And I feel like it's okay for them. But for me, I'm like, you know what? I think we've moved past that. Like, let's talk about some other shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, completely. I think, I think... I always toy in my head about this because when I do write bits, when I write bits, I have this thing that like, what is my, what is the thing people remember about me? It's normally my name is Thor, which a lot of people react to because it's written with a H. So they wouldn't say Thor. They always say Thor. So they're like, wow, Thor. And they don't think of like Norse mythology. They very much think Chris Hemsworth, Mm. Avengers, all of that. Fuck yeah. So that's like a lot of, that's a lot of my life is people being like, is that your real name? And stuff like that. And then it's that I'm Norwegian. So in one's head, I'm like, if I have great jokes about this, this is what people will remember. This is like a great, like, sort of like selling point thing. But then also, I don't find that that interesting. No. I've always been called Thor or Thor or yeah. whatever. I've always been from Norway. So I just think normally I just need to just address it at the start. And then you can really just talk about anything. Yeah. 